guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some more brand secrets. I know you guys love these videos and you do love seeing my dog during these videos. So I'm gonna go grab him. Harvey, come here, baby, come here. All right, there we go. So Harvey once again says hi and during my brand secret videos, he always likes to pop in. You guys always appreciate him too, but I don't like to put him on the camera too, too much because there's lots of really bright lights. <laughs> but anyways, this is Harvey and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about secrets that Anastasia Beverly Hills does not want you to know. I do have five secrets today that the brand doesn't want you to know about and I test a ton of Anastasia products, so that's how I figured everything out for this video. Let's get on to five secrets about Anastasia Beverly Hills that she does not want you to know about. So secret number one does have to do with the amount of palettes that the company has been shelling out to us recently, which is crazy. So secret number one is that they are becoming the next ColourPop. This may not be a secret to some of you, especially if you follow Anastasia Beverly Hills and the launches, but they are becoming the next ColourPop for sure because they are just releasing eyeshadow palette after eyeshadow palette after eyeshadow palette. First of all, Jackie Ina did a collaboration with them last year and I was really, really disappointed for her, like on her behalf, because this palette didn't really get a lot of the limelight, really. They didn't even give her palette too, too much of a spotlight because literally her palette released on August 6th on AnastasiaBeverlyHills.com. This was last year. And then it was in stores on August 15th. They released the first Norvina Pro palette on August 26th online. So let's say you were a diehard fan and you got the Jackie palette right when it was available. That only gives it 20 days or so before the next release happens. But if you were waiting for in store, it gives you about 11 days. To me, that really wasn't enough time considering how much work I'm sure went into a palette collaboration and I'm sure how excited Jackie was for it. So I don't personally know Jackie, but I do feel like she kind of was a tad undercut maybe, and really that palette should have gotten a lot more light. Now, ever since the Norvina Pro palette, they've come out since with two more volumes. They've come out with an Amrezy palette. They've come out with a ton more. So this to me is an observation that I have seen the last six months or so. They are just shelling out product. Now, Norvina did tweet this recently. This was January 9th. She said the next ABH palette is going to be holiday 2020. We are living in pink series all year long. Norvina Vina has a mini and full size between now and holiday. So that just means that they're going to be releasing at least two more in between Anne Reezy, which they just did, and the holiday 2020 palette. So there's still gonna be two more. So it's interesting, her statement's kind of like, the next palette is holiday 2020. However, there's gonna be a Norvina mini and a Norvina full size. So that's technically still two more palettes in between there. So it's a little bit confusing. Perhaps they will be slowing down some of these releases and we can only hope because it is getting to be quite overwhelming as consumers. I know I'm overwhelmed and I'm sure you are too. Secret number two has to do with ordering online. And that is that if you are a Canadian, ordering off of AnastasiaBeverlyHills.com is financial suicide. What I mean by that is that they have a ton of duties and taxes. This is also an interesting little tactic that I've only seen from the Anastasia website. I'm not sure about other sites that have done this, but this is the only brand that I have personally shopped from off of their site that does this. Basically you pay for the item and then it ships pretty dang quickly to the door, which is amazing. I think they use FedEx Express and it's amazing how fast it gets to you. But then about one to two weeks later, you get a nice letter from FedEx saying that you owe about $30 Canadian in duties. That to me is <laughs> a lot. It's almost the price of the palette itself. So to me, this is a secret that I'm gonna pass on to my Canadian viewers. If you are looking to order something off of the website, I suggest you order it off of Sephora. The duties and taxes are insane. So steer clear from ordering off of the website. A couple of you guys have asked me, why do you continue this secret series if you're probably not going to get PR from these brands that you talk about? The the answer is, you know what? I am not super driven by PR, to be honest. Some people may, some people may not be. That's not me. And I'm not going to say something just for free product ever. So the fact that I'm not on PR list because I'm doing these videos is really not a big deal to me. I would much rather tell you the truth. 
Now, secret number three has to do with the PR list of Anastasia Beverly Hills. The one thing that I really love about Norvina is that she reaches out to micro influencers and smaller YouTubers and creators as well, and basically looks at their work online and chooses people based on artistic talent as well, and not so much just purely based on numbers. Now, secret number three has to do with the fact that she's a smart businesswoman. So putting a call out for the PR list and looking for small influencers still gives the brand a lot of free publicity. This is something that I think was very strategic by the brand. Of course, this is a win-win because micro-influencers get a chance to be on the PR list. This isn't typically something that a lot of other brands offer, but it also pushes the brand like crazy because then everybody is tagging Anastasia, Norvina, and tagging their looks and is giving them a lot of free advertisement. So to me, this is a really good business decision. Now, secret number four, unfortunately, has to do with a certain product that has such rave reviews, I don't even know how. It's probably the most terrible product I've ever put on my lips. And that is that the Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipsticks are the worst liquid lipstick I have ever used. Now this of course is a preference thing. So if you do like this product, please don't be offended. But for me, I test a lot of product, in particular Sephora brands, high-end and luxury brands, and the Anastasia one is by far the worst. This is one, you guys, that is so incredibly drying. It sticks to any and all imperfections on your lips. And for me, I'm 30 years old. I don't think my lips look super haggard at the moment. And <laughs> somehow it makes them look that way. It also makes me look like I've aged at least 20 to 30 years. It just gives you that weird creasing, wrinkling type of effect. Let's just say that the bumhole lips type of thing is definitely true with the Anastasia product. The thing that absolutely blows my mind is how well reviewed they are. Now we do know that there's some reviews that might be influenced in other ways, let's say for PR or for paid reviews, let's say. I'm not accusing the brand whatsoever, but what I am saying is that the reviews seem really high for a very sub par product. Now we are on to the last secret and secret number five has to do with the eyeshadow palettes. If you buy an eyeshadow palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills, in particular if it has the nice suede cover on them, a lot of the products that they have carry this very beautiful suede top and that is the Modern Renaissance, Sultry, I think Sultry is more of a glittery one, we have Norvina, we have the Soft Glam palette, all of those have a beautiful beautiful packaging style and all of them have one very similar quality and that is that eyeshadow fallout when applying them to the eyes is not just a maybe, it is a certainty. If you are going to be applying these eyeshadows to the eye, in my personal opinion, they will fall on the cheek 99% of the time. Personally, that just is what it is. It doesn't matter what type of brush I use to apply it. It certainly does help a tad if you're going to be putting it from finger application, but even still, there's some fallout pretty well every single time I wear these. This to me isn't a deal breaker because I love the longevity and the high pigment style of the product, but I always make sure that I do my eyes first because it would absolutely wreck any base makeup underneath if I were to do them after foundation. Even though these eyeshadow palettes are beautiful, the secret here is that they will always have fallout, and that's just my opinion, again, from testing quite a few of the products and seeing this consistently again and again. You can also expect a a little bit of kick up when you're putting your brush into the pans because a lot of them are incredibly soft pressed. Now I have a whole series on other brand secrets including Too Faced, Charlotte Tilbury, and Tarte, so definitely take a look at the playlist in the description box below if you've enjoyed this video. What are secrets from Anastasia Beverly Hills that you have discovered? And until my next one guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys. You and me, everything that we've been through has made us strong. You won't believe we've had our great, but sorry, there's a light inside of us. It shows the way.